Today we'll be looking at a high-level method for the theory of blood, skipping the Sotozig maze in speakers. If you'd like to skip over the technicalities, click the timestamps below to get straight to the method, although I highly recommend watching the video in full before attempting this method. First, let's go over the basics. Starting with the maze in Sotozig, when the boss reaches 66% and 33%, all players will be teleported to the start of the maze, with one player being chosen to guide the remaining players along a designated path. The maze is a 15 by 14 grid, where all but one player will be teleported two tiles back from the grid. They must all run one tile past the grid to complete the maze, meaning 18 tiles separate you from the boss, which takes 9 ticks to traverse. In addition to this, the teleport itself takes 5 ticks, including the frog totaling you to now 14 ticks. Before continuing on, we also must keep in mind that the room itself acts on a 4 tick cycle, and we'll check during each cycle if all players have completed the maze. Sotozeg will only be attackable during the start of each cycle, and we have used this to our advantage in the past to skip the last row of the maze without taking damage on tick 3 of the cycle, commonly referred to as off on 3. With that in mind, it is important to start the maze skip in such a way that you exit the maze on that tick, preventing the team from taking unnecessary damage as such, depending on where the maze is from. In the room cycle, you will wait 0 to 3 ticks before starting the maze, bringing the total time now between 14 and 17 ticks, with an average of 15 or 16 ticks. Comparatively, as seen in this chart, the time it takes to run the maze on average, assuming you already know the path beforehand, and run the maze perfectly is 22 ticks, being 2.4 to 4.8 seconds slower per maze, or 4.8 to 9.6 seconds slower per Sotozeg, with an average of 7.2 seconds. From here, we must solve the problem. How can we run straight across the maze without dying? Normally, with four players DD, each player will take an average of 68 damage per tick, which is impossible to outheal. Or is it? The Phoenix Necklace is an item that when you fall below 20% of your max HP, will clear your current damage Q and heal you by 30% of your max HP, and give you a tick of immunity before it procs. We already take advantage of these in Blow to kill him on the first down, and similarly, you can use them to skip the maze and so does it. Doing so will require 4 to 5 necklaces per player per maze totaling 40 to 50 total for the room since you cannot guarantee that any given player gets chosen. This is just unreasonable to fit with all the other items you need to complete the other 5 rooms of world record attempts. As a solution we have crafted a method that allows you to cross the maze using only 2 necks per maze per player, or 20 total necklaces per Sotoze. This is by combining the mechanics of a phoenix necklace with stalls to bundle the damage of the maze. Therefore, delaying our tick of immunity from the Phoenix Necklace to a later portion of the maze, where we perform another stall to do the same. Most stalls in-game clear your current path, meaning it'll stop your movement, and a very select few stalls do not if you have performed a red-click action to start your current path. Fortunately for us, we have found two stalls that do not clear your path, and are convenient to do because we already have the required items to perform them in standard world record attempt inventory. These two stalls are Humidify and Spellbook Stall. Since each stall lasts 3 ticks with a tick of immunity in between, that gives you the perfect amount of time to run the length of the 15 tile long grid. Now let's get into the actual method. Step 1. In order to minimize the waiting at the start of each maze, we want to be sure we enter the room on the correct tick so that our sight swings line up with the proc that is convenient. This can be tricky because sights swing on a 5 tick cycle, but we want to align ourselves to be at a specific point in the rook's 4 tick cycle. On average, you will proc the first maze at 25.2 or 28.2 seconds, assuming you have everybody swing on the same tick as the players who drag an orange. You can achieve this by having the freezers bow on accurate for the entry, and the ranger back up with Dragon Warhammer if either of the melees miss. If both melees hit, the ranger can instead just drop the tick. Given that it is better to play for a later proc and end up with an earlier one than it is the other way around due to the room cycle, 
We play for the 28.2 and enter the gate on tick 3 of the instant cycle. After entering the room with an active venge and being on Arceus, you should cast your thrall and try to venge once or twice before the first maze. You also want one player to drop an item. We can use a shark so everybody can see it on the west side of Sodas to be used for the red click action. Depending on your role, you might need to drag a warmer at the end of the main. Thus, you should equip your Inquisitor before proccing the base. As you are teleported, you need to right click the dropped item next to so and click the item on the first three after the teleport is completed. You can configure the white screen to be shown or hidden in the top quality of life plugin on the plugin hub. If you have it enabled, you will know that when the white screen has dissipated, the stall from the teleport is over. You are clear to start running on the next three. If it is hidden, you must get a good feeling for when the teleport stall ends. After you start running, you need to wait two ticks before you click Humidify on instance one. During those two ticks, you can equip your first Phoenix Necklace, eat a shark if you are below 20 HP, and if you have fast clicks, even equip your Hammer and Fender. Humidify will last you until halfway through the maze, and when it ends you must equip a new Phoenix Lens and cast Humidify in the same tip, again being on instance 1. After you are stalled by the spell swap, if you have your Dragon Warmer equipped, you can turn on your spec one. When the second stall ends, once more on instance 1 you can attack the boss immediately. You should eat a shark, equip your torture, and attack Soda's Egg in this tick. After finishing the maze, wait within a 3x3 tile of where the chosen player spawns for them to cast Heal Group, before running back around So to your star formation. If you are the one chosen, it is now your job to Heal Group after exiting the portal so that your team can take Venges, tank the Death Ball, or cast Spec Transfer. Heal Group of course damages you though, dealing up to 75% of your current HP and dividing it equally amongst nearby players while topping them off with an additional 5 hit points. However, this means you cannot be above 76 HP when you cast Heal Group, otherwise you will not fall below 20 HP and you will not proc your own peanut. If for whatever reason this does not happen, you can equip your second necklace between your Scythus and cast Heal Other on any player to proc your peanut. After the first maze ends, you need to summon a new thrall, empty your vial, and reorganize your inventory as needed to prepare for the second maze. If you are a mage, you must also be ready to spec transfer your melees. Throughout all this, you need to be watching if you can venge the so orbs for maximum DPS without taking consecutive orbs as to avoid chancing death. It is important to note, this method is not perfect. You can fail it even when done correctly if your HP is too high at the start of each maze. This is the result of your Phoenix Necklace not proccing during the first stall, thus never granting the tick of immunity between stalls. The maze can hit anywhere from 13 to 21 damage, and you take 4 hits of damage per stall. On each end of the scale, this means being 20 to 45 HP will have you live 100% of the time, and being 104 or above hit points will have you die 100% of the time. As an example, if all four players start the maze at around 70 to 75 HP, there is around a 1.5% chance that at least one player will die, having the actual maze path overlapping with straight path can also affect this. Some may claim this is bug abuse, but mechanically it is no different than the rope skip in challenge mode chambers is there. It is using a stall to bundle damage and phoenix necklace to grant immunity. However, with the removal of other third party clients, though still difficult, this is the only method that makes it possible to beat the top world record on rune lane. Thank you so much for watching this guide, and I would like to personally thank all the people on screen right now for their innovations in the top speedrunning community and their contributions to this method itself. You can also check out my Twitch linked in the description where I will be streaming world record top attempts.